Hey all, uh, in this video I'm gonna be talking exclusively about uh, Podgo Edit software. So if you're on your computer, I suggest that you turn it on, especially if you haven't used it before. I've used it quite a lot and I think I can do pretty much everything that I can do on the unit I can do in the software and vice versa. So that doesn't really matter, but for some stuff, I think that using the Podgo Edit is uh, much uh, easier and for me, a more comfortable option. So what do we need to know about the Podgo Edit software? There's actually quite a lot and I probably won't go into every single little detail now. I want to talk about some of my favorite features in the Podgo Edit software and touch upon some of the new features that were brought in the 1.30 firmware update. So what do we have inside the Podgo Edit software? Every time you load a new preset, and this is a new preset, the one you all have by default, you can see that there are a few things already there. There's an amp, there's a cabinet there by default, and there's a parametric EQ there by default, but it's off. Also, there's a mono effects loop, but it's also off. One thing worth noting is that both the uh, mono FX loop and the parametric EQ that are here but are not on and they are technically not doing anything to your signal, they are taking up a foot switch. So by default the FX loop is assigned to foot switch 2 and by default the parametric EQ is assigned to foot switch 1. If you want to get rid of these assignments inside the Podgo Edit software, all you have to do is hover over this FS2 uh, button and a little white arrow will appear in the top after you click that. And if you want to unassign the foot switch to for the effects loop, you just have to select none. And that's the way you get rid of the effects loop and its foot switch assignment. And the same goes for the parametric EQ if you don't want the ability to control. Uh, the on or off state of this parametric EQ, you can select none and no full switch will be applied to that particular block. Another question that I see people ask uh, frequently is, uh, can I copy one block from one preset to another? And the answer is yes, you can. So let's save this preset as preset one. And let's add a distortion unit and let's add anything. Let's add a minotaur and let's save this preset again. Okay, you do some changes to the Minotaur, you bring down the gain, you bring up the uh, tone, bring down the level, and you save the preset again, and you don't have to click this icon every time, you can just press Control S or Option S on the Mac, if I'm not mistaken, and that saves the preset too. Now, if you want to copy this Minotaur block inside another uh, preset, you can do that. You just right click the block, select Copy, and after that, if we switch to a new preset, we can click paste on an empty block and the Minotaur will be loaded inside this new preset. Also, the default behavior of the pod is that it will assign new blocks to a new free foot switch. As you can see, we have foot switches one, two uh, already occupied in the new preset. And when you add a new block or when you copy it from another preset, that block will get assigned to a new foot switch by default. There's a way to change that if you don't want to auto foot switch assignment, but I honestly uh, suggest that you leave that thing on. Because if you turn it off, you will have to do the manual foot switch assignment every time, which is uh, a pain really. Back to preset one. As you all know, in the latest firmware update, we were given the option to rename and color code our snapshots. I've added a few more blocks to demonstrate this next feature. So let's say this is snapshot one, where you have only the amp, the cabinet and the room rear block engaged. And you're probably gonna call that something as clean. Okay, after that, we're gonna switch to snapshot number two. And the way you switch the snapshots is by clicking on this little phone, uh, uh, sorry, this you have to click on this little uh, photo camera icon, this little arrow below it, and it will open up this drop down menu. And inside, you can rename the snapshot. So the first one was clean. So let's say in snapshot two that you want uh, more gain from the Minotaur, and you rename that snapshot uh, Crunch. And after that, you go to snapshot number three and you engage the uh, what is this, the optical tremolo. And you go again here, you rename the snapshot three to crunch, crunch mod, because it has modulation. And finally, you go to snapshot number four, kick in the delay and rename the fourth snapshot as lead with 
delay or something like that. Also, I've seen a few people complaining that the letters are too small to read when you're standing up. Now, my vision is not perfect, but I'm still not wearing glasses, so I think it's uh, rather fine. But I tried that. I've tried renaming the snapshots and standing up from my uh, comfortable chair here. And honestly, it is hard to see the lettering. However, there's one great thing about snapshots now, and that's the fact that we can color code them. And this is how you color code your snapshots. Let's save this preset and let's go back to snapshot number one, which was our clean sound. Now you have to click on this uh, little photo camera icon again and after you hover over this clean snapshot three little dots appear and when you click on them now you can select the color that you want for your clean sound or your clean snapshot. In this case I'm gonna select green. For the crunch sound in snapshot number two I'm gonna select something let's say dark orange. For the crunch mod, I'm obviously gonna pick blue. And finally, in snapshot number four, we have our lead and our delay sound, and I'm gonna pick the color red. And now I'm gonna take a picture so that you can see, because I can't fit my pod go up here on the floor because there's a lot of pedals connected to it and it would look weird and kinda unsafe. So I'm gonna take a picture so you can see how do these color look. So as you can see, we have snapshot one, which is green and that's clean. We have snapshot two, which is orange and that's crunch. We have snapshot three, which is blue and that's the modulated crunch. And we have the red, which is snapshot four and that's the lead sound. Another question that pops up uh, quite frequently is, can I uh, get rid of the new preset uh, thing? Well, you can and you can't technically. You can overwrite all of these with a preset or a starting point as you would like it. In a new preset, as I said, you have the foot switch 2 already assigned, the foot switch 1 already taken, you have the US double normal together with the uh, matching cabinet. However, nothing can stop you to create your own new preset or your own template or your own starting point and copy that across the board. As you can see, I have something that's called rig temp and that's my rig template and I call it rig because it has all these effects that you saw on the picture plugged in and the stereo FX loop is on. So when I switch back to this rig temp, you will see a few things. So there are a few things here that are set up for me as soon as I load up this preset. So the foot switch 7 is to turn off or on my stereo effects loop. I have the parametric EQ on, but it's not assigned to a foot switch because when I do my EQ changes, they are usually permanent and I don't want to make EQ changes uh, throughout snapshots unless they will act as a boost or something very unique, something very special, some kind of a, a, a signature sound. On foot switch 2, I have the room reverb. On foot switch 5, I have the simple delay. Again, the reasons for this is because these blocks don't take a lot of DSP and I'm pretty sure that I can load up any of the amps right now. Yeah, I can load up any amp, so you will not face the ESP issue from the start because that really can happen with some of the blocks. Some of the blocks inside the Lines Pod Go are very DSP intensive, uh, like this uh, Brit 2204. Where is it? Here it is. So this is the Marshall JCM 800 and this thing alone will take up probably 40% of your DSP. And that's why I went with the Line 6 Litigator for my uh, default starting amp because I'm free to switch to another one, but I already have the delay and the room reverb block engaged. Anyway, did you see what happened when I loaded that Brit 2204 or the JCM 800 preset? Check, check this out. Check out the controls. Everything is five except for the bias, which was uh, gone even more than this uh, in the default state. I did this by creating a user default, obviously. So when I start working on a new preset or when I pick a new amp, I would like that amp to have all the tone controls and all the preamp stages, the gain stages and whatever centered at noon. So all the controls at noon. You can look at this from a couple of perspectives. But uh, from my point of view, that's the most uh, neutral tone that you're gonna get. Maybe that's not so true with some of the higher gain 
models that change their gain structure significantly, like the new Mandarin rocker, the new Orange rocker, or Mark III. Uh, I've demonstrated that a few videos ago, and you can hear there how the drive control affects the tone massively uh, in that particular amp block. That may not be the case with all the amps, however, as I said, I prefer to have all my tone controls set at noon when I start tweaking. You can technically do that with every block, so it doesn't have to be an amp block. I'm gonna make my user default for the parametric EQ right now, because these are the settings that I always use. Low cut at 86, uh, high cut at 8, and a very uh, narrow dip around 4.7 or to be precise exactly at 4.7 because that frequency is uh, very offending on my guitar so let's say you want to recall this parametric EQ in this state uh, every time you load up a parametric EQ and the way to do that is by right clicking the parametric EQ block and clicking this user default option. So that saves the settings of the parametric EQ and the next time you load the parametric EQ it will look like this. I'm gonna share just one more thing with you and uh, I'm gonna talk about the channel volume or this final level control that you see here. Now there's one thing that you need to understand about the channel volume and the final output or the final level control. They are not a part of the amp's uh, internal gain structure. If you turn down the channel volume from the default, you will get this exact same sound, the way you set it up, but just quieter. Uh, vice versa applies. If you bring up the channel volume from this default 5, that means that you'll get the same sound, but only louder. So that means that when you're manipulating the channel volume and you don't have more blocks that affect dynamics after the cabinet or after the amp, that means you're safe to use this channel volume as a completely clean, and when I say completely clean, I really mean digital type of gain control. So channel volume is not driving the amp more or less. Neither is the final level control. However, I want you to take this with a grain of salt because I know a lot of people like to do this and I'm still not sure why, but they like to put uh, LA Studio Comp uh, as a final thing in their chain. So if you have a compressor after your amp and your cabinet block, that means that this difference is volume will affect the compressor that comes after it. In this case, when you have a compressor, as you push more volume, this compressor will be doing uh, more compressing. If you lower down this channel volume control, the compressor that comes after it will be receiving a signal that's less hot and will be doing less compression. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to share a few things about the Podgo Edit software and uh, shed some light on this channel volume uh, feature, which gets a lot of people confused. So that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, all.